Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. I've just taken a sip of pineapple juice. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, tangy. All right. So, today I'm talking about snip... Snip... What? <laughs> Slipknot. Um, and their new song, The Dying Song, in brackets, Time to Sing. It came out on the 20th of July, and they've just announced their new album, The End, so far. The End, so far, is Slipknot's seventh studio album, um, and the band produced the LP with Joe Barese. Um Right, I'm, I'll talk about Slipknot and uh, have a look at this new song. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. So, yeah. We're all excited. Just in walking right again. Again. I nearly missed a guitar altogether then. I'll put this down momentarily. Oh, so it just <laughs> keeps hitting that cupboard. It sounds worse than it is. It's that cupboard's made of aluminium or something, so it just makes a really resonant Fwack every time I touch it. And I'm only touching it. There's no dings on the guitar, I promise. Right. You needn't worry. Anyway, Slipknot are an American heavy metal band formed in 1995. They are considered a new metal band, are they? Is that what they are? Hmm. The band's sound typically features a heavily down-tuned guitar setup, a large percussive section, sampling keyboards, and a DJ turntable-ism. Turntablism. Uh, they headlined the Download Festival three times, won a Grammy Award, and sold over 30 million albums throughout their career. Slipknot affectionately calls their fans maggots. <laughs> oh. Starts off with this lovely sort of choral stuff, some sort of gorgeous, um, active synth pad. Your hands into the water, let your mouth go sick and dry. Put your life into your death now, let them sing. So there's two harmonies there. Put your hands. Put your the water, let your mouth go sick and dry. Your mouth go sick and dry. Oh my god, do you recognize that melody? Of the future, don't think about the rest, and we all have the power. And every song, everybody sing, and it's like na 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 na, la da 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 life. So, ironically, the dying song uh, in its opening exchanges reminds me a little bit of "Live Is Life" or "Life Is Life," the uh, Opus song from 1985. There's a bit of trivia for you. Encyclopedic knowledge, see, of the work of Opus. Put your life into your death now, let them see till you die. But the thing is, there's another little harmony here underneath that, so. This doesn't do that exactly, but. And then it goes to this. This is beautiful, look, so. So the interval of these two harmonies is the one that conjures the devil. It's six semitones. Count them. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes you see this interval um, if you're playing a seventh here, like, so the root would be here. So, like, that would be like an F-sharp seven. That just sounds funky. But when they're doing it with an under an E, I think, then what you're going to find is uh, Beelzebub himself will rise from the depths in order to uh, torment you. Die, 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 die. 
It's a lovely, <laughs> I love that military thing. <laughs> like a marching band type uh, approach. I don't know if that's detuned. It might be one of those seven string guitars with, with a B. So it's, it seems to be in B. <laughs> it's a really cool bit there. It's difficult because that's obviously massively detuned there one. <laughs> it's really cool. It's gorgeous. Some some of this stuff's like really interesting um melodically. I mean it's hidden in this in the bombast of the of the arrangement, which is just really, really um what's the word? It sounds like thrash or something. And here comes the melodic part. I mean, it's a really aggressive, really aggressive way of doing it, but these are the chords in that bit. Look, he's got no headstock on his bass. Doesn't need one. Probably chopped it off. It's funny because, like, the the, the lead stuff looks like it's manageable, like, um... Something like that, and then, um, but the the riffery is just incredible. It's, like, it's really difficult to play that stuff. I think you need to have real discipline in your right hand. <laughs> How does he scratch with those um, foreboding gloves on? It's incredible, isn't it? Brilliant. Now they're contextualising that opening sort of vocal part that that, that was the, was in the intro uh, with some with another. It seems to be another key now. Yeah, I thought it was an E before. Now it's in G. Really good. And then it goes back to the choral arrangement. It's really cool, this is. All right. Well, I've always liked Slipknot, and I think this is actually fitting of this uh, legendary band, actually. I, d I wouldn't call them new metal, though. I don't know why, but I feel like they've transcended that a little bit. Yeah, that was gorgeous. I really enjoyed that, actually. Nice one, Slipknot. Yeah, and millions of people have already seen it. It only came out on the 20th of July, and it's millions of people have seen it. Um, so it's a really masterful piece of uh, releasery as well. They've marketed it very cleverly, and I think it's a really good song as well. Nice one. All right, so enjoy that. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. Life. Dab 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 life. Oh, life. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and listen to both Slipknot and Opus. Nice one, guys. See you on the ice.